Uh, police are seeking assistance in uh, relation to uh, missing persons. William Walter Cowell and Joan Iris Taylor, uh, last seen about mid-1983. Um, the missing persons uh, were last seen at the Royal Brisbane Hospital. They were visiting their daughter, Christine, who was uh, suffering cancer at the time. Why, after 30 years, is there an appeal now? Well, the, the search never really stopped. When they went missing in 1983, um, the search began in 1984. Um, through the extensive network of family members, they started the search and, uh, <coughs> excuse me, continued through the generations of Cowles, Bishops, and Taylors. Um, each person would conduct their inquiries, and um, as people would pass on, the new family members would continue the search. We're now 30 years down the line, almost to the day. We have uh, Melissa, who is the granddaughter of missing persons. She is now carrying the torch, and she's continuing the search. Uh, the matter was reported, however, in uh, 1983, the procedure was um, that missing persons would be dealt with by the Salvation Army Missing Persons Program and not by police. <coughs> now, um, uh, in two, 2013, we take missing persons very seriously. However, the procedure back then when they first went missing was to work through the Salvation Army. In that three decades, has there been any trace of them at all? No, not, not, a, not a single trace, which is why police are now appealing to the public to, um, if they have any knowledge of uh, William Walter Cow or Joan Iris Taylor, um, to come forward and uh, help solve the mystery. Can you tell so us there's a little been bit? no sign of the car, keys? Um, they were driving a red um, XP Ford Futura, I believe. Um, the car virtually vanished around the same time they did. And had they driven that car to the hospital? Uh, that is unknown. There were observers driving the vehicle around that period, and uh, it is believed that um, they were in possession of the vehicle when they went missing. Can you tell us a little bit about them? I was reading online that uh, they'd sort of left their home, sold their possessions, mm. they were supposed to be going fruit picking. Can you talk us through that? Um, William and Joan were, were um, free spirits. Um, uh, they, were, um, they lived for the moment. They were good people, very quiet. Uh, kept to themselves, and um, they would often go on fruit picking journeys. They would um, pack up the car and um, just venture out and uh, get employment on different farms picking fruit. It was uh, during one of those trips when they went missing. Do you know where they were headed on that particular trip? Um, it's uh, believed that they were heading to Gympie. Um, Police received information that uh, a P.O. box was established at uh, Gympie Post Office, and um, uh, the last sighting was actually at the post office, and that would have been about mid-1983. I guess um, Melissa can talk us through, give us some description of them as people, but what do you hope in three decades advancements in technology or, you know, how the situation is now, how you may be able to find some trace of them? Well, we've, we've used massive resources on this. I mean, like we, we treat every missing person as seriously as next, and uh, we've poured a lot of resources into this, and uh, we're, um, we've exhausted those avenues of inquiry. Uh, we're now actually seeking assistance from the general public. There might be somebody out there who may have uh, known William or Joan, or um, may have known of them spending time in Gympie, with the Gympie region. Um, we're just hoping that somebody out there can shed some light on the mystery. Had any members of the public contacted police over the years with any useful information? No. Uh, Do you fear that they've met with foul play? Uh, no, it, it just, um, we don't, uh, although we can't be certain, um, through the inquiries and the investigation, um, they, were, they were in very poor health. They were very frail, and uh, the last time they were seen, they were in their 60s, venturing out to, um, an unknown farm to pick fruit. However, in, in the, um, the state they were in, um, uh, it would have been uh, an odd time to be going somewhere to do manual labor. It was right around the time that um, uh, their son Alan drowned and daughter Christine was diagnosed with cancer. So um, it's just timing. Uh, we don't think it's foul play. So there was a lot of emotional factors going on in their life that, that could have led to Absolutely.
Yeah. yeah. I they were. How was Andre when he passed away? Alan. Oh, um, sorry, Alan. Sorry. Alan, I believe, was in his thirties. Um, I don't have his exact date of birth, but I believe he was in his early thirties. Mm-hmm. Drowned in the Brisbane River. Do you believe they're still alive? Well, um, at the, uh, they would be 88 and 90 at this stage, so we don't believe that they, because they were quite sick and frail back in the 80s, so um, we don't believe that they um, are alive. We, um, a coroner report is being completed, which will be turned into the state coroner. However, just to, um, to assist the family, um, police now are seeking assistance from the general public to assist the family in uh, getting some kind of closure. I say it's important to get the family answers. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, they, they've never stopped looking. I mean, like the, the, the search has been going on for 30 years, and it's, it's quite profound. It's gone from generation to generation, so the family are, are to be commended, actually. They never stop searching. Is it true that a letter um, that was sent to them at Gimpy was opened? Um, a letter was forwarded from George Bishop to uh, the missing persons, advising of the death of Alan, um, George and Christine actually drove to the post office box, to the post office, um, and uh, they observed a letter. The postmaster provided them with a letter, um, which was the letter he sent, and um, it had been open. The postmaster, who is unknown, would not disclose uh, the circumstances surrounding the opening or reading of the letter. Yeah, well, it was the normal procedure for when they would go fruit picking to um, go to a local post office and establish that as their address. Um, George and Christine took the chance of sending the letter to the Gibby post office, um, received no reply, and a short time later attended the post office and uh, were notified that the letter had been received, had been opened, and in fact read. Just because we're very uh, visually restricted with this story, yes. do you mind if we just all stand and have a chat to you so the cameraman can get some shots? Yes. Um. So you, you would most likely believe they they were passed now, probably from yourself. They were. They there was a lot of mental health issues. Mm. Um, with the family, they were a very close family, and um, losing their only son and daughter with um, mental health issues and, and very, being very frail and ill of health. Um, yeah. So Ellen had drowned uh, at the time that they went missing? Yes, right around the time they went missing. So not before they were miss- went missing? Um, the, well, they were currently on a fruit picking okay. trip. And so uh, um, we're not even sure how they found out that um, Christine was in the hospital. So apparently through various family members, they kept in communication to find out how everyone was, learned of Alan's drowning and um, Christine's terminal cancer, and drove off into the sunset. And how old was Christine at this time? Uh, Melissa would probably be able to answer that question better. I, I don't have the date of birth. And when did police take over from the Salvation Army? Well, the Salvation Army um, ran an extensive television campaign, press, print media, and that was um, uh, throughout mid-1985. There is a limited time for which they'll run their inquiries, um, which time the family engaged the services of uh, independent solicitors um, and uh, spent quite a bit of money uh, funding a search, all with negative results. We've um, searched our archives and haven't found anything that we may have run. Is there that Salvation Army TV campaign? Would that be on file somewhere? I've, I've tried, and they did not keep any historical archive footage. Mm. Um, also, um, William Walter Cowell, uh, the name changed as the years went on. He became Walter and Bill, and so um, we have documents um, t- featuring different names, so it's possible that they may have relocated and, and moved there as Iris and Bill mm. um, because of record keeping, or rather lack thereof, in the 80s it, it's very hard to track someone a lot different now mm. And did you say that the last sighting was at the at the Gympie post office? or was? Well that was not a sighting, that was just a report of contact, the last sighting was actually um, at the Royal Brisbane Hospital 
mid-1983. Do you know what date? 1983? No, I'm not sure. Mid-1983. Mid. What do you hope um, to achieve through this media appeal? Um, really, it'd be great if they were found alive somewhere, but just to find out really what happened. What can you tell us about what happened, what you know of what happened? Just what Michael Fennard has just more or less informed you. Why is it so important to you to find out what happened? Well, they're my grandparents. Like, wouldn't that be important to you? Absolutely, but we, we want to convey yeah. that to people. So, Well, I've never really known them, and so, like, I'd get... You know, I'm really nervous now. You know, yeah. you're <laughs> Just closure, really. Like, I never knew them growing up. I've got my own children and would have liked to have them met my grandparents and just really closure. I really want to know what happened to them. Yeah. And Melissa, I mean, the, your grandparents disappeared at a pretty emotional time for the they family. They did. Yeah. What's the family been through these past few decades? I mean, that would have been sort of even more difficult for the family at the time. It was, but yeah. Really my uncle it? dying, my mother dying, and then my grandparents missing for in three years. So it was pre pretty devastating to the whole family, really. Okay. And how's that, um, you know, Michael mentioned that, you know, it's gone from generation to generation mm. as... You know, the families obviously carry this pain with them. Yeah, well, it has been hard because, like, we've come up no, no, no new leads or anything, so it's just been really hard for everybody because mm -hmm. we can't find no new information or anything. So. Have any memories of them at all? Mm -hmm. yeah. And what about your siblings? Do you have older siblings who might remember them? I've got one older brother, but he doesn't really remember them that much either. Mm -hmm. So how old were you when they um, disappeared? Right Around four or five. And how old was your uncle Alan when he passed away, do you know? I'm not really too sure, around Michael Fennell told you before. Yeah, I'm mm. not sure. And so, um, whose daughter are you in the family? Christine's. So, Melissa, was your mother able to pass on any memories that she had of her parents? Sorry? Was your mum able to pass no, on any well, memories? No, well, I was so young at the time when she died, so, and she was quite ill for quite a while, so, no, she didn't. Mm. It's a really enduring mystery. It is. Have you um, been involved in any of the searches or anything like that that have gone on? Yeah, um, probably about 10 years ago, 15 years ago, I um, contacted the police and they told me to go to the Salvation Army, so I reported them missing through them. Um, never got any feedback on that. Um, probably about six years ago, we hired some solicitors to try and find them again. Um, they were on the case for about four years and we didn't get anything out of that either. So, And then we've came again to the police station and that's when Michael Fennell has taken over and got everything moving. It was, yeah, it was. Mm -hmm. Do you, I mean, you must be quite hopeful at the moment not now, knowing the case is in... I am, I am. Hopefully something good comes at all. Mm. What would you like to um, say to the people who are watching or, or reading the papers... Yes, I'm going to open up a Facebook page in John and Walter's name so anybody could contact me if they wanted. Like, surely somebody's got to have seen something, the car, um, fruit picking, like there's, surely there's got to be somebody 